Well, what a surprise! Hi, AD. Welcome to New York, the best city in the world. Today we are rating singer, songwriter, and pianist Vanessa Carlton's 2,500 square foot Soho loft in New York City, featured on Architectural Digest. This loft used to be a mercantile factory. It's、uh, technically part of the Soho cast iron district. So we have like. This is all brick, wood, and all these amazing columns that are throughout. So the cast iron district in New York is made up of about 250 buildings, mostly built in the late part of the 1800s. Cast iron was like the plastic of its day; it totally revolutionized building at the time. Not only was it less expensive than stone or marble, but it was much faster to fabricate. You'd make one mold and just pour in the iron as many times as you needed. In the late 18th century, the district mostly consisted of a few businesses and wealthy families, but By the early 20th century, they had moved out, and the area became super rundown. It really wasn't until the 1960s, once the artists started moving in, that the area became revitalized, and it makes sense because the buildings are perfect for studios, galleries, showrooms, lofts like this. Because the strength of the iron, it allows for these vaulted ceilings and massive windows and all the units. You can also easily tell the difference between a real cast iron building and a knockoff. All you need is a magnet. You can see if it sticks to the metal or not. So next time you're in New York, try it out. Let me know. These lights I found in Nashville at the Preservation Station. They're stage lights. I think they were on the side of a、um, a theater. Spaces for me, they must have juxtaposition. So it's very light. Vanessa purchased this loft in 2004 for 1.8 million, but ended up moving to Nashville. So she's been leasing the property over the years for about 15 grand per month. And since it's a rental, I really like going with this industrial kitchen. This whole space so far has seemed like a very low maintenance design for a landlord, but still appealing for a tenant who wants urban loft living. It's a win-win. So I finally was able to work with a designer, brilliant artist named Sarah Sherman Samuel, and something that we really wanted to do was beautiful mosaic tile that you would find around the city at the turn of the century. So since the living and kitchen are so industrial, I like going with this updated take on an early 1900s bathroom. Mixing textures and materials, the wood, the brass, the wainscoting, the tile, the marble—it works. Although I'm not crazy about the wallpaper print, I like the color. Just not sure about the shapes or whatever's going on. So this is the main bedroom. This was my daughter's diaper changing table. I bought it because it was the perfect size for diaper changing, and I just put a great pillow on it, and it was like still matched everything else in the room. Again, I don't feel like you have to buy a lot of new items. I, I love repurposing old things. There used to be. She's not lying there. Like I mentioned earlier, Sarah bought this loft in 2004, but has been living in Nashville for about the last six years. Well, she decided to sell that house in Nashville and instead bought a 224-year-old home in New England that she's completely renovating and restoring. Hopefully, Eddie gets invited for a tour because. I'd be really interested in seeing that project. I'll tell you, anything over a hundred years old is pretty much a blank check renovation. You just never know what's going to come up as you start peeling back the layers. So, if you get a quote from a contractor to restore an historic home, you better plan on having significant contingency funds, just to be safe. Just my advice. This is my dream bathroom. I can't believe this is a bathroom in your city. This is another Sarah Sherman Samuel design, and、um, again. We wanted to do the old school tile. I love the Harlequin, and then we got a really good soaking tub. I'm a big Sarah Sherman Samuel fan. I always tend to like the vibe she creates, and that's no exception here. Both of the bathrooms have felt warm and inviting, and most importantly, don't feel out of place since you're essentially in an old warehouse. All of the other rooms are super light and bright, so I like going with these soft and neutral colored bathrooms to kind of reset the mood when you enter this space. Sarah also designed Mandy Moore's home. If you've seen that, or if you want to check it out, it looks like hippie jewelry. It's like it's all about the dimmer. Okay. All right, I'm ready to rate this space. I like how the apartment mixes your modern elements, but kept a lot of the historical charm. You've got the exposed brick, the iron beams, the large windows. It's a little gothic, a little bohemian, a little millennial hipster vibe, but. With actual money, 
I'm going to go with a 7.4. 7.4 stars is the score. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoyed this one. If anyone's looking for a two-bedroom apartment in New York and has 15 grand to spend, give Vanessa a call. For the rest of you, hit the like, subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Peace. Peace. Bye.